Sickle cell disease is one of the most prevalent genetic conditions worldwide. Every single year, we have at least 300,000 newborns born with sickle cell disease. The condition can cause sudden pain, as well as long-term joint and organ damage, frequent infections, and anemia. You can tell a sickle cell patient by just shaking their pocket, and if you hear pills dangling in there, you know, oh, this guy has chronic, chronic pain. Treatments are limited, and the only curative solution, a stem cell transplant, is not available to everyone with sickle cell. But new treatments are being trialled that could offer hope of a life without symptoms to people with the condition. And they work through gene editing. If we can improve the lives of patients with sickle cell disease, we are not only keeping them away from the hospital, we are actually allowing them to go to school, to go to work, to be with their families. I would not be heartbroken to see my floor have not a single patient with sickle cell disease having any complications related to it. You have to try and lead a normal life as much as possible, but then you have this chip on your shoulder, that sickle cell, that literally affects every single decision you make, every single thing, like when you wake up, how you wake up, what you eat for breakfast, if you can go to work, if you can take care of your kid. Over 6 million people are living with sickle cell disease worldwide, three quarters of them in sub-Saharan Africa. Every single year, we have at least 300,000 newborns born with sickle cell disease, and 80% of these children are born in Africa. Around 5% of the world's population carries trait genes for haemoglobin disorders. But that figure rises as high as 25% in some regions. Two parents carrying sickle cell trait have a 1 in 4 chance of having a child with sickle cell disease. I was first diagnosed with sickle cell at birth. Uh, I was fortunate enough to have parents uh, to bring me to the United States to do the amniocentesis test. Of course, they both knew they had the sickle cell trait. Both my parents are Nigerian, uh, living in Nigeria at the time. Growing up, oof, it was tough. Um, I actually, even, I don't remember my first crisis, but I have a um, reminder, I have this a little deformed uh, finger that doesn't grow as quick or didn't grow with the rest of my fingers. And that was actually my first crisis, that it was so bad that it caused tissue damage, and that's why that finger didn't grow uh, like the rest of them. Pain is the most common symptom of sickle cell disease. As sickle cells travel through small blood vessels, they can get stuck and clog blood flow, causing what are known as pain crises. It was almost a revolving door every week in and out of the hospital, just trying to keep my head above water. For the past 111 years where we know sickle cell disease exists, we unfortunately have only four medications that have been approved by the FDA and hydroxyria is the only one that is widely available, but unfortunately not always accessible in patients in Africa, for example. So most of the case, patients will be treated symptomatically for pain, will be treated symptomatically for anemia, will be treated symptomatically for recurrent infection without a definitive treatment. I've tried a lot. I did hydroxyria. At one point, I did um, frequent blood transfusions as well. That, that helped for a while. Then I did hydration therapy where it wasn't blood transfusions because they were worried my iron levels were getting too high. So they went, you know what, we're just going to flush you with liquids every Tuesday. Until recently, the only curative treatment for sickle cell disease was a stem cell transplant. But this comes with its own risks and requires a bone marrow donor who is a close match to the recipient. But now, new treatments are being developed that could allow anyone with sickle cell disease to lead a symptom-free life. We are currently treating patients with sickle cell disease and beta thalassemia using a uh, innovative therapy called CRISPR-Cas9 gene editing. CRISPR-Cas9 is an enzyme that can be targeted to make specific cuts in a cell's DNA. And this gene editing is used to target a specific gene uh, to uh, allow the stem cells in those patients to produce high levels of fetal hemoglobin. Sickle cell is caused by a genetic mutation, 
Sickle cell disease is due to a single nucleotide change that alter the structure of hemoglobin. And hemoglobin is the protein that made of 70% of red blood cell. Normally, hemoglobin floats freely within a healthy red blood cell, transporting oxygen around the body. But in sickle cell disease, the structure of hemoglobin is altered. Now, after releasing oxygen to cells, the mutated hemoglobin locks together, causing the shape of the red blood cell to change from a pliable donut to a more rigid, stickier sickle shape. Researchers are beginning to trial using CRISPR to directly edit the sickle cell mutation, but Haydar Frangul's group are trying something different. Interestingly, throughout the evolution, babies uh, in utero make high amounts of fetal hemoglobin. Fetal hemoglobin is very efficient in transporting oxygen. When babies are born, they switch from making fetal hemoglobin uh, to making adult hemoglobin, which is hemoglobin A. Hemoglobin A in the situation of uh, sickle cell patients has a mutation in it. In utero, babies do not experience any sickle cell crisis or complications related to their disease. And what we know is we know that this BCL11A gene is what is making that switch. Think about it as a switch. BCL11A tells your stem cells to stop producing fetal hemoglobin. By targeting it with CRISPR, this treatment switches fetal hemoglobin production back on. We know for a fact that patients with sickle cell disease, for example, who have persistent high fetal hemoglobin, and there are populations specifically in uh, Western Africa and in Saudi Arabia that persist to have high levels of fetal hemoglobin. And those patients do not experience uh, significant complications related to their sickle cell disease. Uh, and some of them are completely asymptomatic. So what we are trying to do is we are trying to make the cells make high number of fetal hemoglobin and that fetal hemoglobin can stabilize the red blood cell and prevent it from sickling. And this trial is already showing exciting results for people like Jimmy. He had his stem cells harvested, gene edited with CRISPR and re-implanted back into his body where they started producing fetal hemoglobin. The outcome of this new treatment for me has been a miracle. It was about a week, maybe a week and change. I, I, I could feel it instantly. I could feel the lack of pain. I felt, well, okay, there's no pain. I, I, and usually, because I'm uh, attached to the bed this throughout this whole period, usually once a day, I'll, I'll, I'll buzz my nurse to help me out with pain medication and she'll bring something. And I, I didn't need that anymore. All of a sudden, I didn't need pain medication. I, I wanted to get up. Um, one of the weirdest things, my eyes, usually because of sickle cell, you, you break down a lot of red blood cells and then it, it shows in your eyes with the bilirubin and your eyes become yellow. My eyes became white, uh, just like pure white, which was, of course, I love that. I've I'd always wanted white eyes, but it was just a shock to me. I couldn't believe it. I had to keep on like, is this, is this me? The seven patients that received this treatment all have benefited from it and have not experienced any sickle cell related complications after the treatment. This treatment can't repair damage that sickle cell disease has already caused, but it could prevent new problems from even arising. Unfortunately, it's very expensive. Transporting an individualized therapy like this from a trial setting to where it is needed most around the world will be an enormous challenge. My hope is if we show that this treatment works and the preliminary data is very exciting, that I'm hoping that this therapy over time will be able to scale up uh, to treat patients all over the world. As a scientist working with this therapy, this is my goal, is to help every patient affected with sickle cell disease in the future. Ambrose Wonkham is optimistic that this technology could be used across the globe, but he also knows there is more to be done with the treatments we already have. We know things that works for now for sickle cell disease is newborn screening. And that newborn screening needs to be accompanied by comprehensive care embedded in specialized center for sickle cell disease. We know those uh, simple public health intervention works and those are the first thing to do. But it doesn't mean that we should not add a curative alternative uh, for sickle cell disease. So the future of gene editing, I do think half a place in law resources setting, specifically if we find a way to make them technologically 
accessible, cheaper, and safer. I love this poem by um, Walt Whitman, Pioneers, Oh Pioneers. Uh, that's one of my favorite poems ever, and I just feel like a pioneer. I don't mind being the guinea pig. <laughs> I, I, in fact, I, I relish this role. Um, so I'm happy that I got this opportunity. My thing is I just want to make sure that everyone gets this opportunity as well. That's my biggest thing is this is should be released as soon as possible and it should be affordable and it should be global.